to every hacker con I've ever been to. He's carrying the torch in the US in particular for all the lock picking. And this is just such a fundamental way, I think, to inspire people about security and to help them understand. But also, I'm totally enamored with locks because they're mechanisms. You know, they're physical mechanisms and they haven't changed that. Everything else has become a chunk of plastic with a chip in it. And so I just love that he's, uh, that he's here and you guys are all missing out if you don't take, uh, make the most of his being here. So anyway, enough of that. Thank you, Pablos. Thank you very much. And big, big, like another round just for all the schmoos who keep putting this on. How many people is this your first schmoo con? All right. How many people have been here before? Excellent. Excellent. You're, everyone is going to be coming back, I'm sure. Because it, it really is, I don't like to play favorites in a lot of things in life, but it's, it's my favorite con event to always come to. So I always want to bring my A game for you guys. Although this, this material is stuff that you're all kind of fucked in the audience because you should already know this. So if you know this already, you've like wasted half an hour listening to my dumb ass. And if you don't know this, you're going to like reveal yourselves to be painfully ignorant. So you're kind of screwed both ways. So thank me for that later. All right, but I was actually surprised at that we're setting up the village. How many people have seen the villages and stuff that are going in? All right, we're going to have a good time over there. A lot of people are, I'm really amazed. They're like, oh, I've heard of that Bump King thing. Can, show me that again. I, that scene's neat. I'm like, wow, Christ, I thought this was kind of widespread. But just in case there's some people who, do, who may have heard of Bump King but don't know what it is, we're going to go over it really quickly. I'm going to cover what's being done. Finally, it's a real industry-wide response we're seeing, even from crappy, like, low-end companies. I can't even call them crap anymore. We used to, you know, kick the hell out of Master Lock and Quick Set, and even, like, when those guys are developing secure solutions against bumping, you know it's actually being taken seriously. So, Bump King, what is it? It is popping open a lock very quickly. It takes very little skill. All it takes is a specially modified key. And uh, it's best explained, in my opinion, through this billiard ball diagram that I keep showing people. Everyone remembers their high school physics classes. If you shoot this cue ball, what's going to move? Yes. Well, besides the cue ball, the t <laughs> Joker's up front. Where's the schmoo ball? All right. So, yeah, the two is going to move. The three is going to stay put. Newtonian motion. That's exactly how a pick gun works. If you've ever seen a locksmith or someone in a movie use that kink, 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 that's what a pick gun is doing. It's a long blade, a spring-loaded arm, and it's smashing on the pins, trying to get the top pins in a lock to jump up, leaving the bottom one stationary. It creates a nice gap. With that shear line gap, you can turn the lock really fast. But this is kind of cumbersome. I mean, a pick gun is expensive. It's bulky. It, it takes a while to get that angle just right. You can do the same thing with a bump key. For those who haven't seen one or don't know, a bump key is just a regular key designed to fit in the lock. So as long as it's for the right keyway, it'll slip down the keyway, just cut the key a certain way. How do you cut it? You cut every notch. It's called the bidding cuts, the bidding depth. You cut that to the deepest manufacturer depth. That's usually level nine. Every manufacturer has a slightly different scale. You can do that by hand. You can do it professionally. You can do it you know, with a file, a Dremel. We're making them over there by hand. What happens when you made this little key with all the ridges. Well, this is what happens. If you stick it in the lock and smash on it, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the little bottom ridges contact the bottom pins all at the right moment. It drives a force right across them, bangs those top pins up, and if you turn the lock at the right time, it pops open. In the Netherlands, all of our friends in Tool, uh, they put a whole paper out about this. They created a stir. They were really the first people I had learned about it from. It's a great paper. You can download it. It's still online. There's been revisions to this technique as well. Some people will actually take the shoulder and the tip of a bump key. I love to do this personally. They cut them down even further. You take maybe half a millimeter off of the tip, half a millimeter off the shoulder, and you wind up with this heavily modified bump key. You can actually, unlike the other method where you pull it out by one notch, this is a key that you can stick all the way in the lock. And you can see, because of that negative shoulder, it has this little wiggle, this minimal movement, tiny wiggle. That's enough room for you to still slam it with some pressure, drive force right where it needs to go, and bang those pins up. But it doesn't rake across all the pins. It doesn't really smash the hell out of the bottom pins as much as the first method. So, I mean, in a nutshell, that's bumping. You're all going to try it if you stop by the village. It's immensely easy, and it's a really, really big problem because so many locks are susceptible. What countermeasures are out there? Finally, thank God, there are some. First of all, 
If you're using an advanced lock, a high security mechanism, something that has sidebars, sliders, a rotating disc, you're probably safe. Not always, I'll cover which ones will and won't protect you, but you're probably safe right there. Something like a Schlage Primus or an Abloy Protec, obviously, rotating discs. I'll give you a whole bunch of brands later if you want to ask me. Any auxiliary mechanism is half the battle. Some manufacturers, however, are exploring ways to make bump-proof locks that don't have the expense of all these secondary mechanisms. There's techniques like trap pinning, shallow drilling, and also things happening up in the top gap. What do I mean by advanced systems on the side, by the way? This is, if you've seen my lock diagrams before, your standard pin tumbler stack is up here. Some locks will have a sidebar that can only fall inward if it interacts with some other system. Like, for instance, here's a twin lock by ASA. The sidebar has these little finger pins. There's uh, sliders, Scorpion Lock, Eva Lock. You see this Austrian company, Eva, makes a beautiful slider-based lock. Same idea. Medico. How many people have heard of Medico? I still, Medico t has taken a little bit of flack lately for some weaknesses, but they're still a decent lock. They use a sidebar system with a rotating pin. It's a really neat design. And of course, I've actually switched all my real high security stuff to Abloy, personally, um, just because my Medicos were these big armory locks and they're just heavy. So all my guns and stuff are locked up with Abloys now. You're not going to, you know, bump, there's nothing to bump on a rotating disc system. Speaking of high-end locks, though, let's talk about the weaknesses really fast of some high-end locks, weaknesses and susceptibilities to bumping. Something you should know. If you've seen my, how many people have ever seen our, like, lecture that we give in the village where we talk about the imperfections in locks? This is a little view of the pin chambers in a crappy lock they're really out of alignment. There's a lot of mechanical fault and me mechanical bad tolerance when they manufacture a lock. That misalignment makes picking easier. Consequently, good locks, really high-end, high-security locks, tend to be flush, really true, really tight tolerances. It makes, it makes picking harder. It makes bumping easier, however. When you're trying to get pins to fly up all in a perfect, smooth way, the, the tighter the lock is engineered, it actually will bump more easily. There's a few other susceptibilities you need to worry about with those high-end mechanisms as well, however. Uniqueness is a problem, particularly with some sidebar systems. Sliders like on EVA, sliders like on Scorpion are not as big a problem, basically because you can't bump a slider lock. But let's talk about sidebars with those finger pins, like this ASA lock. This ASA lock can be milled very easily by any locksmith shop for the regular key bidding. These sidebar cuts they can't be milled by any local locksmith. Locksmiths have territories that ASA divides up, and they all get issued certain very small sets of blanks. So in any given territory, if the sidebar, if you can, if you can figure out the sidebar, you're halfway there when it comes to bumping. Even smaller territories you need to think about are not geographical, but system-wide. How many people have worked in a facility with uh, what's called master keying? Not master the brand, but you know, master permissions, where you have a key to your door. Yeah, and the sysadmin has the key to his door, but the, the CEO has all the doors. I can show you later on a diagram how that's done. Essentially, all that hoo-ha happens with these cuts, these main bidding cuts. The sidebar in almost any mastered system is probably unique across all doors. So if I have a key to just my office, I can look at it and say, well, there is clearly the sidebar code to the whole facility. I could probably take my key, cut the top of it down and make a bump key for the whole facility. Same thing goes for Medico with those you know, angled rotating pins. It's very hard to extrapolate out the sidebar unless, however, you say, oh, wow, this is my key for my office. I'm betting this is the sidebar code for the rest of the building. Be mindful of that. Something we talk about with any mastered setup bumping notwithstanding, you don't need to have just one friggin' key for the top master for your whole facility. If you have two or three really secure areas, tell the top guy that there's like two guys who ever really need everything. It's usually the CEO, the COO, and then like the janitor who's making 20 grand and is going to steal your stuff when, you know, he wants to feed his kids. But, you know, they can be encumbered with like two extra keys. Just keep, you know, really secure areas completely off of your mastered key ring. What else we got? Yes, what if you don't want to reinvent the wheel, though? What if you don't want to have these auxiliary mechanisms? You just want simple, you know, what can we do with pin tumblers? There's something called trap pinning. European locks do this. Not too many American locks do it. It's these very high strength, high spring force, extra sets of pins. You have a key in this lock, it's going to operate fine. You try to open this lock without a key, let's say by bumping. 
trap pins fire, they seize the whole lock in place. Not only will it not open, it's guaranteed evidence when you come in on Monday and the lock is seized at a 45 degree angle, you know someone was in there doing something they weren't supposed to do. Problem with that is there's only one way around it, you gotta drill the door out. So maybe that's why locksmiths like them. They want to, you know, sell. Oh, well, that was protecting you. It was so great. We'll sell you another one at cheap. There's also shallow drilling. Normally, when a lock is constructed, and these are those sometimes misaligned, sometimes tightly aligned chambers, they're drilled, they're filled with pin stacks. Shallow drilling in the manufacturing process works like this. You have one pin stack, perhaps, that's short drilled. You see that? It doesn't cut all the way down. So when the locksmith drops all the pins in the lock, one of them will not actually touch a bump key, and it's hard to determine where that is. You can reach in there with a scope, you can try to feel it, but most people who are bumping aren't really skilled people. Problem with that is you can't repin this chamber into all different heights. So if you have a mastered setup, if you have a repin, you're trying to reorganize your organization, you're limited. It, it sort of fails the spec, obviously. The industry spec is not met by that chamber. Something that has a lot of promise, there's the bumping not working. A lot of promise seems to be messing not with the bottom, but with the top of the stack. People started experimentally changing their top pins around. People were making odd cuts on the top, trying to get the pin to jump and traverse in odd ways. That is what companies like Masterlock have latched onto. Master is now touting their bump stop protection. It's an actual, you know, they've done all the research, they published white papers, and they're finally starting to brand their locks with this designation. And it's exactly what we've just described. Here's all your regular chambers. The last chamber, usually it's only one per lock nowadays. Maybe you can repin them. But they have these specialty top pins. This weird taper of a top pin that won't drop down all the way into the cylinder. So if it's not touching the bottom pin, the bottom pin will jump really hard when you try to bump. The top pin's not going anywhere. You can acquire all of, oh, I'm sorry, and Quickset. Even friggin' Quickset is now touting, you know, we have bump guard. As I say, if, if Quickset takes notice, you know that, you know, John and Q Public is, is finally informed. So, where do you get these? Um, not too many places, unfortunately. Aside from those high-end brands, which you can get from locksmiths, those trap pins, the shallow drilled locks, they're mostly European. Master is putting out those top-gapped, either as a retrofit or as a new model. Look for the letter N in any part number by Master. Those have bump stop, and they should say bump stop right on it. Master's really trying to take the lead and, and be the one to, to get all their name out in the press with this sort of problem. The quick set, by the way, the bump guard is on the Smart Series. So, there's also this, this fluid called Pick Buster. I don't know if I've mentioned that in a previous talk where you may have seen me. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's a, it, the idea is that it'll impede the movement of the pins. Well, yeah, that'll stop bumping, but it'll also stop the lock from working as well. You don't want the lock to be gummed up. <laughs> If you have a lock that's an out, like at the front door of your facility, it's going to be you know, exposed to fouling and dirt and grit. You don't need anything inhibiting those pins, in my opinion. Just get a better lock. Quick one, if you, you know, just, you're somewhere cheap, you're at the gym, because you know, I clearly get to the gym all the time. Um, <laughs> and you don't want to have like an $80 lock to, to keep your socks and sneakers safe. But you don't want to use a, a che you know, cheapy combination that can be shimmed. Consider one of these. Look on eBay. Uh, for these XDOD locks, they're actually DOD file cabinet locks. Sergeant and Greenleaf makes the 8088, and the 8077 is actually the newer one. You're not going to shim them, you're not going to bump them, you're not going to do anything to them, but they're, they're, they're simple. You don't need a key if you're swimming in a pool or something like that, so it's a nice, it's a nice option to consider. What else we got? Yeah, my, my usual spiel, don't trust something unless you've seen it. Don't trust me, because I'm up here telling you I'm, I'm some dumbass. You don't know who the hell I am. So take stuff apart for yourself. Come to the village, try things, rip them apart, break our tools if you want, break our locks, and, and see, really see something for yourself. Unless you've gotten inside of a system, you guys all know this in the, in the technical world, in the digital world, unless you've seen the code, unless you've really reverse engineered the product, you don't know if what a vendor is telling you is the truth. So exposing bad security, you're not doing anything wrong, you shouldn't feel bad about it. We don't ever feel bad about the stuff we set up and tear down in there at the village. It's, it's all... You know, it's all in our best interest. And with that, this is my plug for the, for the Lockpick Village. Um, we have our own room. Usually we're just kind of crowding a hallway, making a nuisance of ourselves at ShmooCon in the past. Big crowd and no one can, you know, fire marshals are yelling. So they gave us our own room. It's over there this year. A lot to learn. There's tools there if you don't have your own. There's a lot of, you know, little lessons we're going to give. And there are a lot of games we're going to have. Uh, how many people have stepped into the village so far this year? 
So you've seen this weird setup on the wall, right? And you're like, what the hell is that? Um, we are playing a new game. And I'd like to tell you about it with my four minutes remaining. The game has a story, because this could be any one of you in a real-world situation in the, in the wrong time, the wrong place. The game goes like this. You're at Torcon. All right? You're having a good time. You're learning. You're kicking back with your friends. It's, you know, hotties and hard liquor and hacking. And it's, it's Torcon's. How many people go to Torcon? Yeah. Yeah. If you're not, Torcon is very, you know, uber good plus plus. So you're having a good time, right? But you step out for a smoke break. And people are saying, hey, man, it's good to see you. Oh, it's, oh, we're here. This is great. What's going on tonight, man? Are there any plans? The party's not, the big party's not till tomorrow. We'd, we're in town a day early. We've got to do something, right? And some joker, possibly Dan Kaminsky, <laughs> says, I got the greatest idea. We'll go to Tijuana, man. It's like right across the border. You know, cheap tequila and donkey shows. It'll be fucking great. <laughs> so the next thing you know, you're down in TJ. You know, just kicking it in the barrio, and, you know, you, you have a friggin' blast. One drink leads to another, leads to another. By the end of the evening, things get pretty bad. All you know is that you wake up groggy in some flea bag police station. And you say, what the hell did I do? You have no wallet, no passport, all your stuff is gone. A guy walks into the room and with a snarl says, Eh, say, you were very drunk and disorderly last night, Holmes. You have to pay a fine. You say, oh my God, what, what's the fine? He said, we find this Mac card in your wallet. We're going to take you to the ATM across town. The fine is whatever you have in your bank account. Now, we're going to leave you in this room for an hour to think about our offer. And you're sweating bullets. You're like, is this, is this for real? Am I going to get jacked here? Am I going to get just left in a desert if I even pay these guys? You have no intention of finding out what their plan is. You're not going to comply because they didn't check you very well and you had lock picks on you. Our course starts you off in a chair in handcuffs. You gotta pick your handcuffs. You gotta pick a door to get out of your cell. There's a guard who you will have to disable. <laughs> there is a filing cabinet. One drawer has your passport. You'd probably want that to get back home. Another drawer has a pistol in it. One more door gets you out of the facility, but you have options. What if you took so long, we're going to give you five minutes to break out of jail. If you take so long getting out of your cell, screw it, just bag it, just run. You lose some points that way. What if you can't pick the last door? There's a security camera, we're assuming, outside. You don't want to look inconspicuous, like going out a window. But if you would pick the lock that has the pistol, you could shoot the camera. Go out the window and you're fine. Maybe you don't go for the pistol. Maybe you don't want to, I don't know, shoot the guard. You just pick your way out the door and walk out nonchalantly. Maybe you're fine that way. It's going to be a real blast. It's all, the, all the bars set really low. The locks are real easy. I'm not trying to be like crazy lockpick master test here. It's just to have fun. So show up. You know, let's all play Gringo Warrior. And uh, I really encourage you to, to participate because of the prizes this year. <laughs> the prizes this year. <laughs> in, addition to <laughs> in addition to the top three finalists, I've got these, you know, fine Got Whiffy shirts, if you don't know the joke, fine Beetle. But the top prize this year is something that I, I made a, through a little bit of an engineering shtick. I made a little package, and I have a very limited quantity of these packages. They're for people who are very dedicated to the penetration testing world. If, you, if this is really your field, maybe you'll buy one. All the proceeds for the ones that are being sold, they're actually $100 packages, goes to the Traveling Terabyte Project. But you could win the Kick-Ass Social Engineering Clothing Package. You get a hard hat, you get a metal contractor's clipboard, and then you get polo shirts fully embroidered, not silk screened, with the Comcast logo, the Verizon Field Tech logo, and a fictional fire services firm. So just imagine any facility that you would come to. Maybe you're, maybe you're a fire inspector. Hmm, I'll have to uh, check. It's, where is the rest of your wiring? Does, now, does this wire go through the attic? I'll, I'll see myself up there. You know? Oh my god, I've discovered the source of that line noise. Could you uh, show me where your main telco panel is located? Because uh, I really have to get down there and check that out. 
Yeah, that's very sexy. And of course, anyone who's a Comcast customer probably has their head in their ass. So, <laughs> yeah. You could pretty much do anything with a Comcast shirt, I'm guessing. Come on by. It's not going to be hard. It's going to be fun because that's what this is. we want this to be about. It's about fun and learning, and that's what you guys bring to the table every year. Thank you for always being so friggin' great. Were there, do I have a couple minutes? Were there any questions? I don't know. Let me see. We have five minutes, maybe. Really? Wow. There may be other donated prizes we're hearing about. Were there, I see some hands. Just shout it, and I'll repeat your question. From master or quick set? Master. The question was, with the Manster bump stop technology, is the special anti-bump pin always in the last chamber? Uh, no, it's not. They usually try to vary that up. And if it's being repinned by a locksmith, obviously it can be put in any chamber or more than one chamber. I s I'm sorry. Yeah, the question was, if you could extrapolate out some repeatable pattern, could you make a, modif a specially modified bump key? You almost always could, or if you knew it was going to be always here, maybe you bump the whole lock and try to pick one last cylinder. I saw one hand kind of, I saw two hands. Pablos? The question was picking the new bump protected locks. Is it, is it any harder to conventionally pick them? You sort of may have seen... <clears throat> The master pin isn't just a taper, which I thought it was. It's actually a taper with a reverse kind of notch. So it functions almost like a pick protecting pin. It is a little harder. Uh, and that quick set series is actually a sort of a weird side wafer based. It's, it's not something you would, you would attack in the same way that you'd be expecting, especially not from a quick set. So most of the time when these people are reinventing enough of their assembly, they're actually saying, why don't we just not fix problem A? We'll try to take out problem B and C a little bit as well. So they were a little harder. And there was a hand about two rows behind you. Yes. The question was electronic locks with batteries in them and codes and green lights. Um, beyond the scope of this, because it would take too long, but yes, we know a lot about it. Ask us in the village. Obviously, any electronic system has a, has a good chance of not being bumped if it's not just physical interactions. But, um, but you'll be surprised. Some of them are really shitty. Uh, ask, us, ask us in the village. I wish I could give you a longer answer. Were there a few other hands? I'm sorry? Oh, is Medico still in denial about... Yeah, I don't know. Is, are they? Is ta talk I haven't heard from Tobias on what the latest response was. All right, yeah. Read Tobias's next volume for that one. There's bright lights, and I feel like I'm getting pulled over, so I can't see if there's any other... If there's any other hands, just shout, or else I'll take my ass home. Wait, there's a hand here. The question was, which locks are on my house? People ask me all the time. Uh, I rent, so I don't own my own doors. My locks are shit. <laughs> my locks are actually a brand called Defiant, which is like Quickset on Quaaludes. Um, yeah, I, I own a shotgun. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's on my house. And all the shit in my house is locked with much higher end stuff. You know, I have cabinets that are locked with abloys. Yes. Yeah, if you couldn't hear Che, he, he makes the really terrific point that this is a, an industry very resistant to change. They yell at people for exposing information. They really have not addressed a lot of problems. This is a perfect example of enough people making noise. If, you know, it's basically people in this sort of a room make noise. They go home and over Thanksgiving break, they have John and Q normal citizen who get upset and they make noise. And once you get it on the evening news, like I've been on CBS News interviewed about this crap, it's nuts. Then the vendors finally are like, whoa, we got to do something or else people aren't going to trust us anymore. We've only been making shitty locks for 10 years. They should probably change. <laughs> Any more questions? I should probably blast off. There's more drinking to do. So <laughs> last, last but not least, there's a hand or just you're raising a beer. All right. With that, thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks to the schmoo. <laughs>